All right, guys, so let's talk about my personality problem. <laughs> I really hate being vulnerable. All right, let's get uncomfortable. Um, I don't know where to start with this video. <laughs> I'm like laughing because there's just some deep shit that's kind of going on and I'm not very vocal about it because I learned something about myself which is I don't like to express when I'm struggling because I see it as a form of weakness. So basically, one week ago I had a few friends tell me to take a personality test and this personality test is so accurate. Like it is creepy how much this describes me. It's called the Enneagram personality test and I highly recommend everyone to try it. It's free. Out of the nine different possibilities, I am landing on the personality type number eight. The reason why I'm telling you this is because that's my issue. I'm a type eight personality. Because of that, it comes with good and bad traits, and I'm gonna express them to you so maybe you can learn a little bit about me and hopefully learn a thing about yourself. This website literally just roasts the shit out of me. Like, if you're type eight, you would like feel so attacked. So here it is. The eight is the challenger. The powerful, dominating type, self-confident, decisive, willful, and confrontational. Their basic fears include being harmed or controlled by others, which is literally my biggest fear. I do extreme measures to make sure no one can control me. I include like manipulation. Yeah, I'm a monster. <laughs> Let's keep going. Desire is to protect themselves and to be in control of their destiny. Again, I love power and control to the point where my goal is just to have full freedom to do what the fuck I want. Uh, if you guys don't know, and I'll get into this later on, but I did drop out of high school. This is where I run into my problem. Because I'm a personality eight, which just basically means I love to be in control and I hate getting controlled by others. My biggest fear is looking weak and looking like I don't know what I'm doing. And it reflects so heavily in my day to day. And for so many of you guys that watch my videos, I will never be vulnerable. And I it's so frustrating because I tell people to be vulnerable and I'm not doing it myself. This is me trying to tell my story a little bit better. Okay, I, I guess I need to backtrack. So let me, <laughs> let me get some tea. Sipping a tea with a reusable straw because Save the turtle. Thank you so much to Sosis, by the way, for sending me these straws. You guys can check them out if you want to save the turtles too. Comment below if you're sipping tea as well. Grab a snack. It's gonna be a roller coaster. Ugh, okay, I hate being vulnerable. Ew. So for those who don't know, I'm Jade. I'm 18 years old. I run a startup and I make YouTube videos. You could say that I am a social media expert. I can't even. Say. But um, I do a lot of work around social media and marketing. That wasn't always my story. I remember like when I was like six or seven years old, I, you know, picked up music, art, ballet. Uh, when I got into elementary school, I made my first YouTube channel called Kitty Films 8. And I was making films at the heart. I love performing. I used to want to go into film. Um, I wanted to be an actress. I wanted to be a dancer and do everything in art. That was my goal. I think it was around when I was uh, sixth grade or fifth grade, I realized that I had a lot of health complications. I ended up in a wheelchair at fifth grade. And it wasn't because I fell off a rock and like broke a limb. It was because I actually had eczema, which is actually a very common skin problem. And what eczema does to you is it just makes you itchy. But for me, when I was in fifth grade, I was so itchy. Like I think I had like a really bad version of it to the point where I would scratch my skin off. Yeah, it's pretty gruesome. So I couldn't walk. Like I literally would scratch the back of my legs and my limbs couldn't be flexible. I had to like swallow my pride and get in a wheelchair and you don't even know, you don't even know how freaking much it took me to get in that freaking chair. Like my school, I remember so like vividly, like they would see me limp. Let me show you how I would limp. Okay, so basically I'm at YouTube right now. Um, <laughs> every one of their employees would see me just do this. Like I was like walking like this because I couldn't open my legs. So I was just like hunched over. So anyways, I was limping and it would, it took like five teachers and so many phone calls to my parents that they're like, hey, Jade should probably get in a wheelchair because she can't even go to class. And I think my ego or my pride was saying like, I cannot get in that chair. I will look disabled. I will look weak. And people, most importantly, will have to roll me around. <laughs> Do you understand how like embarrassing that is? Because the worst thing is like, I wasn't even like sick. I just had eczema. Like so many, so many people think, thought I like broke my leg, which I didn't. I just had a little bit of a skin problem. So I didn't want to exaggerate it. It took me so much to just get in that chair. And I finally did because my eczema didn't get better. Um, by the end of fifth grade, I was in a wheelchair. All my friends were rolling me around to classes. And uh, I didn't go to school. Um, I passed fifth grade, by the way, which is crazy. I, I made it through with an A. But just to tell you how much I hated being looked at, um, consistently getting stares because I was in a freaking wheelchair. Being, I don't know, like, so many people asked me what I had done to myself and I was just like so embarrassed to say eczema because it wasn't like I fell off a mountain. It felt like I was broken. 
keep in mind I would still take violin and like dance lessons while I was in a wheelchair like I would stand up sometimes it's just not good but I just wanted to show the world that I am full of energy and I love to talk to people and I'm not a disabled crippled person and I don't want to look like I'm weak so I tried my best to break that and it was painful like I just want you to keep in mind realize that when you're scratching your skin off like this when you're moving your limbs it is really not the most comfortable feeling actually it hurts like a Anyways, that was my childhood years. I don't think I've ever told that story. And this is why I... Basically, I just realized that my 18-year-old self has so much to do with what happened to me in fifth grade. And I have never really made that connection until today. I was talking to my dad and I was asking like, why do I feel so bad when people help me? Why do I feel so guilty? And I hate it when I am not powerful and in, and in control. And I realized it's because in fifth grade or maybe in my younger childhood, um, the the feeling of weakness equals disabled equals crippled i think i made that drastic assumption and connection in my mind that i i literally suffer in my business because i have a big stick up my butt like i have too much pride and let me tell you what's happening now so fast forward i'm 18 years old i have a startup called pbj and i consult brands for marketing and i love my job like i actually get excited every single day but here's the thing i run my business on the margins and what does that mean um when you're running your business on the margin you can be making a ton of money but also spending a ton and it goes up and down <laughs> that's how i run my business i would say currently basically i would take all the income i made from my consulting with these brands for instagram and then i would put it into the startup and like i would just get money cash it out cash it out into my company invest it and although i know i'm building something long term it's just like i don't really have like a really long runway which is why i'm always anxious like i uh, don't really sleep that well <laughs> I, every time i have a friend that i really like or i get something good in my life i don't think i deserve it because i'm so anxious all the time yeah i've, I've realized that i need to be able to ask for help and be vulnerable because you, do you know how bad I feel when I tell the world how to story tell on Instagram and I can't even tell my story properly. I mean, that's just so hypocritical of me and I want to be honest with you guys and let you know the real truth what's going on. Uh, a lot of people paint a picture of who I am online and I have millions of views on this channel, which is crazy, but I feel like those millions of people watching me don't really know what's going on behind camera and I wanted to show you guys the real me so with that being said I was gonna give you guys three life updates um, now that you're catched up through my life what's going on today that Jade is trying to fix so the first thing is I got it's so hard for me to admit I got messed up by the IRS and it's funny because I made a video about how to make money and pay your taxes and I feel so hypocritical because I my accounting system didn't get properly sent in so when I was delayed, you know, the IRS is mad and wants their taxes now. So I owe them some money. <laughs> um, and because of that, the second thing is I am working on a brand new, like exciting project. Um, PBJ has transformed from an app to a software. And if you don't know, PBJ is my, my business. What we do is we create now, I'm, I'm really excited. I, in like five days you're gonna see what's gonna happen we're working on a huge product shift um, originally PBJ was gonna be like a place for creators to learn how to grow their social medias but now I've decided to create more of a way for creators to talk to their fans better and communicate so we're kind of creating a SMS channel and I won't dive into that until probably a few days later but uh, we're becoming a software for influencers that they can use to talk to their fans and I'm really 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 excited and I put in like literally all my money and time and like efforts to making this alive so i'm really really excited so that's one good thing um i feel pretty good about that i know i make money i know i lose a lot of money but it's the future that worries me and something with a type 8 is they hate not being in control and i realized that from the times i've done my millionaire projection like i've always made revenue goals throughout time and i don't really hit them right all the time. I've realized that I am making assumptions and trying to predict the future on things that my, I can't control. And I realized that, say my goal is to make PBJ a million dollar company, but there's so many variables that I can't control. I need to be more aware of the things I can control. 
um, and that's my thing. It's like, I, I, as a type eight, I don't think I need to start being like, I don't know, like floating around in space person, but I also don't think I need to be on the other spectrum, which is a control freak and hates to be weak. I think I need want to learn how to find a middle balance, which is being able to ask for help when I need it and being aware of the things I can't control and can't. I think that separation of tasks will really help me maybe get out of the shithole I have with the IRS and make PBJ as successful as possible. I believe in myself. It's just a matter of fact of how long I'll live because I feel like I'm always running on the margins. There's nothing wrong with having problems with your personality. It's just being aware about who you are and maybe not even trying to solve it. I think owning who you are and being aware of it is the best way to go about life. So you know the next time you have conflicts that you're like, this is who I am, I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna accept myself. Because I think so often I don't accept the fact that I maybe am fucking up with the IRS. I, maybe I don't accept the fact that I maybe am a little bit crazy from running on the margins. So knowing that and accepting it will put a lot of peace. So if you're someone going through a lot of things that you can't control or you're feeling like you're feeling like you're putting on a show for other people and the way you look at yourself, no one else can see. I know the story that I want to tell people, but I don't tell you guys a story that I actually am. And that, and this is entirely me. Yeah, so that is my journey as a 18 year old founder. I am super excited for the future. A little bit nervous, a little bit anxious, but um, I will take you guys along through the journey. So thank you so much for sticking through. I will give a video update probably when PBJ gets better or worse. So make sure you guys comment and subscribe if you'd like. Shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you guys want to be the next comment winner, just comment below. And um, thanks for watching. I feel really naked and vulnerable, but I appreciate your attention. And um, I appreciate your attention. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you, Dharma Nation. Thanks so much for being here. I cannot be here without you. And I mean that. Love you guys. So you are